Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about the batch apex. Uh, it's a pretty interesting topic though, uh, because you know, if you wanted to say run uh, thousands of millions of records, right? If you wanted to, so in other words, if you wanted to process a large set of data and you can process in an asynchronous way. And when you have to, um, do such kind of uh, operation, it's better to go with the batch Apex approach, right? So that's the, the topic for today. Um, so what I've done, right? I have actually written um, a code a long time ago, um, you know, explaining how to write a batch class. So I've done this as a part of an integration series, uh, which is a pretty amazing series I've done uh, based on the feedback I, I got from people. Um, so I put the, the link in the description below. So I would highly encourage you to, to watch this because I talked about how to consume an API, how to write a JSON parser, uh, then how to do this in a batch, and then how to schedule a batch, right? So you pretty much uh, get to learn, you know, API conception, uh, JSON parser, uh, you know, how to run a batch and explaining um, what each stuff means, right? So I just got to walk you through it a bit just to give you a context, right? So like I said, right, in batch, if you wanted to process uh, thousands of millions of records in an asynchronous way, then you're gonna go for a batch op option, right? Um, now in batch, right, remember one thing, every transaction, right, that starts with a new set of governor limits, uh, that means it's, it's gonna make it easier to ensure that your code stays within the governor execution limit, right? Uh, and another thing you have to understand that if one batch fails to process, right, uh, all other successful batch transaction won't roll back. Okay, so which is a good thing. You, sh you shouldn't be like, okay, I have 50 batches in process out of 50, say 49th batch fail, so I won't roll back everything, right? Um, so, um, so this is how you write a batch class if you wanted to implement. Right, so in this case, we, you know, you name whatever you name you want. So you have to implement this database dot batchable. Um, so this, you know, the map integer map string, right? That's pretty much governed by a, what, uh, you know, I triple um, input you're after, right? In this case, you can have sometimes you will have a basic string if you're after, a, you know, a string or a list of strings. So that's pretty okay as well. So I do understand that it looks a little bit complicated for you guys if you're not sure what's happening behind the scene. That's one of the reasons why I asking you guys to I'm asking you guys to look at those series I've done so everything will get clear. So um, the my main intention is to t tell you the three important methods what we have. So one we have the start method and we have execute when we ha and then we have finish, right? So you have to implement this as a part of this database uh, batch well, otherwise your class won't work okay so start is you know when you run when this code get executed right the start part of the code get executed first that's where you're building a list and that list will be used in the execute context so for instance if you want to do a, a do an operation on a on an account object right so let's say you wanted to uh, change the status of say um, an account uh, to inactive, uh, which was created, say, you know, uh, last year. Okay, so what are you going to do? So in iterable uh, start method, you're going to get the list of accounts. You know, you can say which is, has a create date. You know, less than one year or something. You know, so you know, just create date. Um, so one year, and then you get those list of accounts, uh, and then you pass those account to uh, under execute, right? So in that case, the code looks pretty straightforward. So you're gonna do the list of, you know, IDs or whatever, right? And then you're gonna run this here uh, and execute, right? Execute will do all your magic operation and finish code will uh, get executed as the last stage of the operation, right? So for instance, if you wanted to uh, send out an email or, you know, log an error, right? So you can do that, but for that, you remember one thing, um, you have to use a state concept, right? Because usually batch apex is typically stateless. Okay, keep that into consideration. So each execution of a batch job is considered as a discrete transaction. So 
you know, you will not have any information of other batch that's happening behind the scene. Okay. So if you wanted to make sure that you, you, you know, your operation is stateful so that you get to handle the error logging stuff, then you have to use something here, right? <clears throat> Say database uh, dot lost, something like that. Um, I think, yeah, the database dot uh, the stateful, that's the thing you have to, um, there's something like, hang on a second. Database dot um, uh, stateful, right? So that's if you if you specify this, right? Uh, you can maintain the state across all the transaction. So remember this one, right? This is very important because I've seen people doing uh, mistakes saying, "Oh, why I can't log the error across all the state of transaction?" The reason why because you have included the database dot stateful, right? By default, is stateless. Okay, so that's one of the things that can put many people off the uh, in the wrong path. So yeah, so. Only use it when you wanted to maintain, uh, you know, when you want your the variable to remain, uh, you know, in a stateful position across different transactions. So, yeah, so error logging is one of the reasons why, right? So if you wanted to process in a finished state, you can do that. Or if you wanted to send out um, an email after each transaction, you can do that. So in this case, I haven't added much, so, but that's all good. Um, so, um, so the like like I said, right? This this code is pretty straightforward. You don't have to do much. So, a few things um, uh, you have to remember, right? This is my personal advice and opinion. Uh, you should not write your business logic inside the batch class, right? I've seen people doing that, which is a very bad practice, right? As you can see, uh, I'm dealing with the product stuff here, but I don't have any product related code inside. Uh, this batch, you can write a separate helper class or separate controller class, whatever you call it, right? If you are someone who came from a Java background or a C sharp background, you know, model view controller, design pattern, right? So you need to split it out, right? So this is like a separation of concern in simple terms, right? So you need to follow that pr design principle whenever you're working, um, you know, for instance, in this case, the batch more, batch operation. So you should not be writing your business logic inside this batch. Whenever I see a code like that, I often reject the code review straight away because, you know, you can't test it easily, right? It's good to have a model approach thinking, right? So that, you know, if you wanted to reuse it, right? So for instance, if you wanted to um, product controller or get product info from API, if I wanted to use this method somewhere else, I can use it now, right? Otherwise, if I, if I, if, if I'm planning to, um, uh, make this code a spaghetti code, right? By putting all this logic inside this class, then it gets very difficult for me to test it and reuse it, right? It's you should always reuse it, okay? And yeah, so and one other thing you need to understand that you need to minimize the number of asynchronous requests created to minimize the chance of delays, okay? So that's one of the um, thing. And also, you have to pay very special attention if you're planning to you know, invoke a bad job from a trigger, right? Uh, because, you know, because I've seen that people getting there, doing this stuff and, and, and then they, you know, leading to a wrong path because you have to able to guarantee that the trigger won't add more bad jobs than the, than the limit, right? So that's one of the things um, you have to understand, right? So, we're going to talk about queuable Apex because the thing is that, you know, you should only use batch Apex if you have more than one batch of records, okay? If you do not have more than one batch of records, uh, then it's better to go for a queuable Apex route, okay? Uh, but that being said, if you have lots of batches, then you should not be using the queuable method as well, okay? So you have to, that's why it's important to understand the difference. Okay, so... Um, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about the, the batch side of things. and But I do encourage you guys to check out the video. Well, uh, I've done like probably beginning of the year when I did the integration series. Because it will give you a context. It will give you uh, enough importance. Uh, you know, uh, not importance. 
I used the wrong term, but I was um, enough, an, you know, it, decent understanding about the batch <clears throat> stuff. And I also talked about the refactoring the batch code. Uh, so the reason why I decided to do that series, especially on the refactoring side, because you know, I, you know, I came from a, I came from a .NET background, right? I mean, when I, I mean, I started as a C, C programmer. Um, and C is not an object-oriented programming, right? So you still get used if you wanted to do embedded programming and if you wanted to touch the bare metal. I still consider C is one of the um, the best languages ever I've worked with, right? C Sharp is okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. Um, so I learned a lot of design patterns when I was working in C Sharp and as well as in Delphi. Uh, so I try to bring those stuff to Apex when I, when I first got introduced to Salesforce. And when I looked at existing Apex code, I just scratched my head. I said, who can write this kind of code, right? Because the you know the problem I've seen, the quality of resources in Salesforce is not great. I mean, no offense, but you know, the kind of codes get written, it's just a garbage, right? I mean, you should compare a dot code written by a 10 year guy experience and a few, and an Apex code written by a 10 year uh, guy. There's a massive difference in the structure and the design patterns you use, right? So that's one of my reasons why I wanted to improve the, you know, uh, the structures in the, in the Apex side of things as well as in the LWC side. The LWC side, let's not even get into that because, I, I mean, people shouldn't be making mistakes in LWC because there's a JavaScript code, right? And JavaScript been around for years, right? Years. There are, there are amazing design patterns around JavaScript. And I've seen the code written all over the place. It's just... It's just a spaghetti garbage, in other words. That's the terminology I use it, and I, I don't mean an offense, and I'm not ashamed to use that term as well because, you know, when it's something is wrong, you got to point it out, right? Because otherwise you're going to cost company more money in the long run, right? So, which is unfair in my opinion. So, yeah, so, so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Batch, sorry for the rant, but, you know, but I thought it's important for you guys to understand. Cool. So that's the uh, the batch side of things, and I hope you enjoyed the series. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a amazing Saturday, or you know Saturday morning if you're in Europe, or Friday if you're probably in Cook Island, in the United States. So that being said, have a great day. Adios.